and ate in their presence. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. sermon for the third Sunday of Easter based on 1st John chapter 3 see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God and that is what we are you are important but not the way you normally think Fifteen years ago, when I was studying to become a pastor, I ran across a quote that kind of startled me and made me think twice. The quote is from Eugene Peterson, who's a pastor that I know that I quote a lot, and you may know his name through his Bible translation called The Message. The quote is, the most important thing a pastor does is who he or she is. And at first glance, the quote didn't make sense to me because Eugene Peterson is talking about the most important thing that a pastor can do and yet doesn't give me anything to do. I've thought a lot about the quote over the years and occasionally I understand the wisdom of it. The most important thing about you is not what you do, but who you are. Eugene Peterson, a pastor's pastor, was writing primarily to pastors, explaining about the pastoral vacation, the vocation. The most important thing a pastor does is who or she, who he or she is. But I would like to expand the quote to include everyone, because I think the wisdom works for us all. The most important thing that you do is not what you do, it is who you are. Think about it for yourself. Think about it for the people that in your life that you love the most, that have meant the most to you, that have changed your life, have really impacted you. And I would imagine that the reason why these people mean so much to you is not so much the things that they do, but what they represent, who they are. They, these people, these important people in our lives, yes, they do things for sure, but the reason why your favorite people do what they do is because of who they are on the inside. Like Jesus said, by their fruits ye shall know them. Deeds are important. What we do makes a difference. But more than anything else, our deeds reveal who we are. Character matters. Who you are matters. You are important, not because of what you do, as much as you are important because of who you are. Deep down, your essence, your soul, you are created in the image of God. And every time you reflect that true self, your soul to the world, every time you give yourself in love to the world, being vulnerable, then you are impacting people, changing lives, and you're being very much like Jesus. And you're just reflecting your true nature because you are a child of God. There's this beautiful scene that Linda read for us, given to us in Luke chapter 24. The disciples were in a room together. They were talking about all the events that had taken place over the previous few days, and they were strange things, things that didn't make sense to them. There was chaos in the world, and events were turned upside down. They were confused. And suddenly Jesus appeared among them and blessed them with his presence and said, peace be with you. They were startled. 
They were terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus continued to love his disciples just as he has always did. He didn't chastise them for their confusion. He didn't expect them to have it all figured out. He just blessed them with his presence. And his, his presence brought them peace. He showed them who he was. He said, look at me, look at my hands and my feet. You could even touch me to see that I am real. Jesus didn't keep himself from his friends. He didn't try to hide behind a mask. He didn't put up walls. He didn't try to protect himself. That's why they thought they were seeing a ghost because Jesus didn't have a shadow side. He didn't have any part of him that he tried to keep hidden. He made himself completely vulnerable. He changed the energy in the room. His presence changed the disciples from nobodies to somebodies. And the most important thing that Jesus did was to show us who he is. Divine, yes, but also very human. You are important, but not in the way that you probably think that you are important. You are important because of who you are. And who you are is very simple. It doesn't take a lot of pretense or practice. It doesn't take a lot of anything, but just to show that I am a simple child of God. You belong to God who loves you. See what love the Father has given us, that God shows us who God really is. It's really kind of the same verse as John 3.16. See how much God loved us, that God came to be one of us, to take on frail human flesh, We know that God has great power, but the source of power that God has is God's vulnerability. This is how we know of God's love. God became a vulnerable ba baby in a manger. Jesus blessed those who cursed him. He healed those who were forgotten and alone. He hung on a cross. He showed us his wounds. He allowed us to touch his flesh and bones. And through this vulnerable presence, this powerful, vulnerable presence, we are changed. Because God is who God is, we can be who we are. Perhaps you've been in rooms like the disciples were, where things were confused and chaotic and people trying to figure out which end is up. But I hope that you've also been in rooms like the disciples where Jesus showed up. I've been in such rooms. I've even been on Zoom calls where this happens as well. And it most often happens when people are listening to each other, truly listening. In our Wednesday nights, we practice the no crosstalk rule where we really just listen and receive what the person is saying, not trying to fix the issue, not just uh, not trying to do anything other than just be blessed with the gift that the person is sharing because it is part of who they are. And when we accept people as a fellow child of God, then we create a safe place. And then in safe places, Jesus shows up and people start sharing from the heart, showing others what is most real and honest about themselves. 
And this includes more often than not sharing our hurts and our pains and our grief. Vulnerability is such a gift. Vulnerability turns a room of nobodies into a room where everyone knows that they are somebody. First John tells us that we are children of God. We are lots of other things as well. We can identify ourselves according to lots of c- categories in the world. But no identity is more important than that of being a fundamentally a child of God. One of the identities that I love, that I relish, is being a dad. And I have loved being a dad and being a caretaker for my children. But as my kids are getting older, I see that they don't need me in the same way that they used to need me as a dad. They still need me, yes. But they don't need me to do things for them like I could in the past. And Because I don't see them as much as I would like, I can't be a dad for them in the same way that I used to. So I'm realizing now that I have to redefine for myself what it means to be a good dad. I'm a good dad, not because of the things that I do, but what I represent in my children's lives. The best thing that I can do for my children is who I am. I'm still a somebody for them, a very important somebody, often ignored and made fun of for very good reasons. But my best gift for my kids is my presence, my energy, my spirit, my self. The most important gift that you can give to people that you love in your life is yourself. It's the gift of your presence. Be vulnerable with them. You don't have to buy them things. You don't have to have everything perfect in the house. You don't have to have your life together. If you wait until your life is perfect before you share your life with others, then it'll never happen, right? It's actually your imperfections, your mistakes, your failings that show that you are human. And people can relate to other humans. The most important thing that you do is who you are. It's not your job, it's not your possessions, it's not your bank account, it's not your reputation. You are not what people think about you. You were not even defined so much by your failings and your mistakes. You are defined purely and simply as a child of God. I don't like being around people who are not genuine, who are not real, who don't show me their sweet side their child of God side. They make me nervous. They make me feel like a nobody. They make me question who I am and make me do things that I wouldn't otherwise do. I like people who are real, deeply spiritual people, mature, even emotionally healthy people always can put you at ease. I can be myself around such people They make me feel like the somebody that I am, like the child of God that I am. They remind me that I have much to give, much love to give. These people that walk into the room and change the energy in the room, they remind us that there is enough love in the world for everyone because it is in love that we live and move and have our being and see what love the Father has given us, that we, we should be children of God. And that is what we are. 
Thanks be to God for that gift. Amen.